very low. Okay. When they go come into kindergarten, they've had no preschool. How many of you at preschool? Do you remember? Almost all of you at preschool, yeah. The kids at our school in Kalihi, where I'm from, the kids come from the housing, near like housing, and um, we have a lot. Eighty percent of our school is Micronesian. Yeah. Most of those children have not gone to preschool. So when they come into kindergarten, this we give them a test to uh, see if they know the ABC if they know color, shapes, recognize their names. My 22 kids last year in kindergarten all scored zero on the test. In other words, they did not know any alphabet, they didn't know any shapes, they didn't know any color. They're five years old now. No colors, didn't recognize their names. Um, literacy is a really, really big problem in Hawaii now because um, preschool is about $800 a month educate all day. So it's really unaffordable. So you folks are doing the parents a really big favor because a lot of our parents now don't have time to do that. They're tired and they're not really reading to their kids. And the kids I get, nobody's read to them. Nobody has read to them at all. So uh, if you folks are going to be reading to the kids, kids I bow down to you folks because they need someone to yeah. yeah. It really makes a difference. You folks will do this and you will think, ah, oh, you know, they're not gonna remember me and they're not gonna remember this. But the people who I ask, I, the reason I ask who is read to is because if you were read to by somebody, it's the one thing that you remember about books that somebody read to you. So some child out there is going to remember that you read to them. You're going to practice being, and you're going to make a difference in their lives. Maybe not a huge difference, but they will remember somewhere in their life that they were read to by somebody. And it's going to be you. So, you know, never think that what you're doing is not important. Because what you do is one of the most important things you can do for kids. And as a teacher, I'm going to tell you, I have kids who sit in a class, and I know which kids were never read to by anybody. Um, it makes a difference, and I'll tell you the other reason why. I also, for the last five years, did a big project with the prisoners from Hawaii. I traveled to Arizona twice a month, and all the 1,800 prisoners who are housed in the prison in Arizona, I worked with about 600 of them, and I did um, a literacy project with them where they read stories to their children and we, we burned it on a CD and we sent the CD and the book home to their children so they, the children can't travel to Arizona to see them so they're very disconnected with their kids and you know just that one project where their dads read to them where they had the CD the dads even weren't even there all they could do was listen to the CD of their father reading to them and they have the book. For some of those kids, their academics went like the shooting up just from that one simple thing. So even though you're not a father or a mother, you're like an auntie or an uncle who takes the place sometimes of a child who doesn't have an adult reading to them. So on that note, very serious note, I am going to read a story to you. Who is the color of this book of Bridget of Huh? I didn't need to read this. It's like an obscure book. One day, Doc went swimming in the lake. What a great swimmer I am, Duck thought. Just then, she heard a big splash. Greetings, Duck, said Gander. Who knows what a gander is? Gander is a goose. Gander is a goose. Okay. Hi, gander. Watch me swim. Duck paddled as fast as she could. Not bad, said gander, but I'm faster. Let's race, said duck. Ready, set, go! And off they swam across the lake. Duck came in first. Ta-da! I am the 
champion. Maybe, said Gander, but I can fly higher than you. Cannot, said the duck. Gander flapped his wings. Ready, set, go! And up they flew above the spruce trees. Gander flew higher. I am the champion of champions. No, you're not, said the duck. Yes, I am, said Gander. Thud, thump, they landed side by side. Duck fluffed out her feathers. She waddled back and forth. Finally, she turned to Gander. Let's have a freeze-in-place contest, she said. Don't move, don't talk, don't fidget a feather, and the winner will be the one and only, true and forever, champion of champions. That's me, said Gander. We'll see, said Duck. Ready, set, freeze. Gander stood still. So did Duck. She watched Gander. She watched for him to move. A bee flew out of the bushes. <laughs> it zigged around Gander's head. <laughs> it sagged around his tail. It won't be long, thought Duck, before I will be the one and only true and forever champion of champions. But Gander did not move. The bee zigzagged toward Duck. It hovered over her head. It landed on her neck. Duck did not move. She did not move one muscle. She did not quack one quack. She did not fidget one feather. The bee Away. Duck waited and waited for Gander to move. A horde of bunnies bounded over. They perched on Gander's head. They slid down his long, long neck. Soon, thought Duck, soon I will be the one and only true and forever champion of champions. But Gander did not move. The bunny surrounded Duck. They tapped on her beak. They played with her webbed feet. They leapfrogged across her back. Duck did not move one muscle. She did not quack one quack. She did not fidget one feather. At last, the bunny walked away. A sudden wind gushed up. Clouds of dust rolled into the air. Branches swayed and leaves scattered. Whoosh! The wind blew Gander into a grove of dandelions. Whoosh! It knocked Duck into a mulberry bush. After a long, long time, the wind settled down to a sighing breeze. Half a second more, and along came Fox. What luck! Fox's nose quivered with delight. Dinner tonight and dinner tomorrow. Dinner just waiting to be cooked. Out of the corner of her eye, Duck could see Gander. Gander did not move. Then neither will I, Fox rolled Duck and Gander into his sack and fastened it tight. So did they move at all? No? Okay. Then he dragged and pushed and pulled it through the woods. Fox took Duck and Gander out and set them down next to each other. He started a big pot of water boiling. He chopped up potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, celery, and squash. He threw in a handful of beans. He added garlic and pepper, and he stirred the stew. 
Then he turned and looked at Gander. Gander did not move one muscle. He did not crack one crack. He did not fidget one feather. Neither did Duck. Eyes sparkling, mouth pointed from one to the other. Eeny, meeny, miny, mander, cook a duck or cook a gander. My tummy says to pick this one, and that is Y O U. Fox carried Gander over to the pot. Gander has to move now, Fox Duck. But Gander did not. Fox opened the lid. Clouds of hot steam billowed. Move, Gander, please move, Fox Duck. But Gander did not. What if Gander can't move, Fox Duck? What if he's afraid? Fox lifted Gander high. In we go. That's the story, Don't Fidget a Feather, and it's by Erica Selvern. Okay. So that's one of the stories that you, that is okay. um, a really good story to me. That was a good story. Yeah, pretty good. Any comments about the story? <laughs> really? How dare I cut it off? Right when it is getting to the exciting part. I'm so sorry. You'll have to come back tomorrow to get the rest of the stuff. <laughs> okay. I do that to my kids a lot in the school. And you know what? The next day when they come back to school, the first thing they want me to do is read the other half of the book. What happened? We want to know what happened. I have my kids go to the library that night and make their parents borrow a book so they can read the ending. Okay? One of the tricks that, well, I shouldn't say tricks. One of the things I do with little ones, because like you, some of you are falling asleep here, don't, you know, I see the place going down. And my kids do that too. You know? It's a way to kind of keep their attention and keep them going. I know it's really hard. It's almost five. And you guys have been here all day. So, Rather than um, look this book up. <laughs> I know, I know you guys are tired. Okay. So oh, 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 oh. I'm really bad. Okay. Yes, if you fall asleep, I will point you out. I want you to know. So for those of you who are dozing off, as soon as I see your eyes closing and it's going down, I will point you out, okay? That young lady back there and just I mean, my pants staying away. Uh-huh. <laughs> she goes off a couple of times that I was <laughs> But you know what? I forgive you for I know you're all tired. I brought a whole bunch of books and I'm gonna do something with this, okay? No, Tiki Tiki Temple is it? Actually I would read Tiki Tiki Temple to you, but you, I'll just bore you to death. Who knows Tiki Tiki Devil's woman? What is it? Oh. Oh. I don't want to say it in the world, but it's cherry Tiki Tiki Devil, no star rambo, cherry bari muchi, tip cherry temple. Okay. Only reason I know it is I read that book so much, I have to be memorized. But you know what? All the kids that I have all want to memorize that name. They remember the brother. What was the brother's name? That's like two letters. Well, one word. The brother's name is only one word. Didn't it mean it's like. Okay, the two boys. Tiki Tiki Tambo is the one who falls in the well. Okay. The brother, the little one, who has to go get get help. <laughs> he has a very short name. His name is Chang. Oh, duh. Yeah. Okay. His, his name is just Chang. Okay. Who remembers? Stone yeah. soup. <gasps> stone soup. Did your teacher ever make stone soup for you? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. Oh, you poor deprived child. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, what a lovely teacher. 
I always make uh, I always make stove soup for my kitties. I always and I actually do have a stove that I put in. And the kids, it's really funny when you're little. They don't ask me if the stone is clean. They don't ask me where you got it from. I throw the stone in there and they eat the soup. Okay. Now that you guys and now that you guys are older, if I made stones and I threw a stone in, what would be the first thing you would ask? Is it clean? Is it clean? Where did you get that stone? Yeah. Okay? So, it's the best thing about little kids, you can't trick them. I couldn't go outside and pick up a stone and they would still eat the soup. Okay? So, there is show soup, which is a classic by Marsha Brown. Okay? There's also one that's by John Boo, and this one has monks, Chinese monks in it. Okay. So this is a different stone soup. So if you're going to read to kids and say, ah, oh, oh, we all read, ah, oh, we had stone soup already, oh, old stuff, you know, old news, we have a different one. And this is slightly different. Um, this is with three months. Hot, lock, and seal. Okay? All right? Three little pigs. Did you know that there's one called three javelinas? Yeah. yeah. Three little javelinas. Okay? You want to read a book to the kids? They ask them, oh, who knows the three little pigs? Oh, yeah, I've been there, done that. We know the three little pigs. But do they know the three little javelinas? And these are really, really cute little um, pigs from, you find them in the desert. Yeah? They're really, really cute. They're wearing, of course, cowboy boots, cowboy hats. Then there's the three little ones in the big bag. Oh, I remember that one. Okay. This is the pig boot bag. This is a very violent one because they think they blow him up. They have dynamite and they blow him up, okay? You know, very violent, but hey, what the heck? Little kids love it, okay? Um, this is a book I absolutely love because of the pictures. I mean, this cat is like so cute. How could you not love him? Love the cat, okay? Cute cat? Yeah, yeah. This is a book. I have two. This one called Aliens Love Underwear, and I have this one just called Underwear. Okay. Kids love this book because do you ever get to read a book about underwear to kids? No. Never. I'm going to read you just a few pages. Zachary Zebra did not like buttons or snaps or sleeves or slippers or zillions of, of zippers. He did like. Underwear! He liked all kinds of underwear in all colors and prints and styles. And his best friend, um, what's his best friend's name? Orpha the orangutan loved underwear too. So all the animals in this book wear underwear. So when you look, they've got all different kinds of underwear. What I do in my classroom is I have all the kids bring an, un pair an you know, underwear from their parents. <laughs> okay. So the parents have to give them underwear, and it's hilarious when they bring in their father's boxer shirts with hearts and or poly clovers or something on it. It's really funny. But you folks, when you're reading, it the really funny, funny thing to do is if you bring in a small bag and you have all different kinds of underwear in it, and you pull it out and show them, the kids just love it. They will listen to you read the book. Like, and you'll just be the best reader of all time. Okay. Remember we talked about five Chinese brothers? Yes. There's one that's the seven Chinese brothers. There's seven of them. Yeah. And the seven all have different strengths, like in the five Chinese brothers. It's, um, it, I don't know, what, what grade, do you know how old the kids are that you're going to be reading to? You have no idea. Um, they're elementary school. Elementary school. They're going to kindergarten school. Okay, so the little. If you get older kids, say like third or fourth grade, I, I doubt that you'll be getting the older ones. But this is a good book for the older kids. The little ones really can't sit through a book with this many words. I would say kindergarten first. This would be like way too many words for them. I mean, they would really, by the third page, they'd be dozing off. Or you would really lose them. Because it's a lot of words. I would say a book like this is for um, older grades, maybe. Second could probably handle it okay. Or third. And if you were going to do it, like I said, one of the things you could do, you know, with Don't Get to the Feather, if you know you're going to go back to the class again, read only half the book. 
find a point, a good stopping point where Judy says, stand up, stop there, and then say, I know what you're talking about, and it's good to me. And that really works. Oh, here's another stone that says a different one. So they have all different stones, several different stones. Like they have different, you know gingerbread man? They have all different kinds of gingerbread man stories. There's one uh, that John Moon who wrote this book, he wrote a ginger man, gingerbread man story, it's a monthly man, and it's set again in, in Asia, an Asian one. And um, there's the Musubi man, that's a local one, that local one. Okay. Um, Big Bad Wolf at school. Love this story. Okay. Do you see the pencil sticking out of the wolf's mouth? Yes. Okay. These are wolves who are really naughty. Okay. They go to school to learn how to hunt sheep. Okay. And Rufus, who is the um, the wolf in here, does not want to hunt sheep. So he, he misbehaves in class because all the other wolves are learning to up and pop or disguise himself as sheep. He is sticking pencils up his nose and doing all kinds of other things. I'm sure the kids that you read this will really relate to that, okay? So he is one of those. So there's the hop and pop range where the wolves are practicing, popping and popping the big houses down. And then there's the grandma disguise class where you disguise yourself as grandmas, okay? Um, some of these books are really, really funny. Okay. Um, so there's wolf. There's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay. So you'll like that. Another one that um, you might want to choose too is I don't really know if you guys are allowed to give the kids treats. They probably aren't. Yeah. Okay. I usually do little mini cupcakes for the kids, and I'll read books about baking or like the little red hand made bread, I'll bring them small pieces of bread or two. And um, this one is, they make salsa in this one. So I bring you some salsa. But, you know, since you guys don't get a chance to do that, food books are really fun though, and they have lots of different food books for kids. Cinderella Penguin. Who knew? Who knew that there was a penguin out there who was a princess? Okay. This was my daughter's, my daughter's twin. This is my daughter's favorite, favorite, favorite book. And it's about a penguin <coughs> who is, like Cinderella, going to go to the ball. Okay? This is not a screen with um, Cinderella penguin. And these are the, um, the horses. This is the ball. And this is Cinderella penguin sleeping and her evil stepsisters. Okay? It's really neat. And there's a twist on the ending in this story, okay? There's also the Korean Cinderella. Ah, you didn't know there was a Korean Cinderella, yeah? There's also one that there's an African Cinderella, yeah? And there is the rough-faced girl. This is a Indian, um, American Indian Cinderella story. So when you're reading to the kids, if you both get to select the book, choose one that there's because by the time you read to the, the kids in your classes, they will have heard the Three Little Pigs, The Little Red Hand, Three Billy Goes Rough, and all of those things. You might choose a book with a different spin. Because even the Three Little Pigs, there's another one where um, it's the sister. Three Little Pigs and the sister. And the sister is the one who saves the three brothers from the wolf. Yeah. Um, the most important thing when you're going to read a book to a child is you have to like the book. If you don't like the book, you'll never enjoy reading it to the kids. So if you get a chance to pick the book that you get to read, pick one that you like. Because if you don't like it, the kids will know you don't like it. And if you don't like it, you'll be as bored as the kids will when you read it to them. So that's one of the things that you know, I can tell you anything. If you have a, a favorite book that you love when you're little, pick that book to read. Because you'll like it too. You'll enjoy reading it. Yeah. Um, so far, any questions about anything? I know. Yes. Um, what is like your recommended book? Okay. 
keep book with. What I would say is normally kindergarten and first graders, when you pick a book, I wouldn't pick a book with more than five or six sentences on a page. You can get a longer book, but something like so you see this one, you see that the longest can be maybe three sentences on a page. You can read this book in about five minutes. Maybe five, maybe a little bit over five. That's about just right for kindergarten first graders. Um, there's like, like Dr. Seuss where they have these like pages that are like really long. Yeah. It's, Dr. Seuss books are really good for beginning readers because the reason they it's long, it's, it's got really short pages, is because of the repetition. They're trying to teach kids rhyming words in the Dr. Seuss book because so how kids learn to hear sounds and words is to rhyme. Just pat, 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 pat. They learn to pick up, um, they, they get an awareness <coughs> of the sounds of English through rhyming words. So the reason the cat in the hat is used as a primary reader for beginning readers is because there are all those rhyming words in there. But if you're going to do it as a read aloud for little ones, if you're doing can one, like Green Eggs and Ham, I love Green Eggs and Ham, but it is a long book, yeah? So you bring it to second or third grader, they love it. It's simple, they can understand it, and they can sit through that length of book. But the little ones, you may have to break it up if you were going to read something like that. Because if you have them sit there for 10 minutes, you know, by the time five minutes, they're all fine. <laughs> to the kid next to them, right? So, and know your audience. When you see kids starting to fidget and starting to poke somebody else or whatever, you know you're losing them. You know you're losing them. Like, I know who I've lost in this class, pretty much. <laughs> because, you know, um, some of you are really tired, some of you are really interested, some of you are like, eh, you know. It's just that you just have to watch the kids. When you look at the whole class and you see a third of them starting to fidget or, you know, like that, you kind of know already they're, they're all going to eventually, within a couple minutes, all start to get fidgety. So then I would kind of, I forgot my, oh, I left it in the car. I was going to have you guys do one where you stand up. Have you ever read the book, The Enormous Potato? Okay. Um, that's okay. Um, I can talk to you. Okay. In this story, the enormous potato, the farmer plants a potato, okay, and it grows so big, he's not able to pull it out of the ground, okay? So if you're reading to a class of kids, or maybe even eight kids, you can have them stand up, and they can do something interactive. So in the book, the farmer is trying to pull out the, the potato, and he's not doing it. So he calls his wife. So his wife comes behind him and grabs onto it and they both pull the potato. Okay. Still can't pull it out. So they call their child. So the child stands behind the wife and they're all pulling on the potato. And it still doesn't come out. So they call the dog, the cat, the mouse. They call all these different animals to pull out the potato. And in the end, it's like a whole long string of people and animals pulling out the potato. So if you get a book like that, you can have the kids all, you call them up, it's going to be the dog, it's going to be the cat, you're going to be the farmer, and you have them line up, and they'll love it. They'll really get into the story. So if you can find a story where they're interactive, that's another really good thing. Yeah. Um, another thing that you can do is when you're reading a story, you have to like two characters, you can do finger buttons. I know, you guys don't have finger puppets, right? You don't carry them around here. Go get band-aids and drop faces on the band-aids and put the band-aids on your fingers. Okay? And then when you do the story, you can do the characters. Yeah, put the band-aids. So they'll have faces. So like if you did Goldilocks and Three Bears, look what I do. I draw Goldilocks and a band-aid on one side, you know, with the face, and I draw three bears and when I'm telling the story, there's Goldilocks. This is that. Except you gotta be really careful because one at one point you're gonna use your middle finger and it gets up your eyes. 
So, you know, you might want to use these three fingers. I tell you this because I've done that, and the kids are like horrified because we told them not to stick up their middle finger, right? But I think, oh, this is Father Bear, and this is Mother Bear, and this is Baby Bear. Ah! <laughs> okay. It's like when I see where, where's something with my um, my preschoolers, you know, where is something, where is Pointer, where is Tall Man, where is Big Man, and where is, you know, um, right? So Tall Man always gets the kids. They can't wait to do Tall Man. Because <laughs> it's the only time they can put they can fly the bird at <laughs> So um, I tell you this because you, when you do, if you do bad thing puppets, you have to be careful what figures you use, okay? <laughs> or use only two characters. <laughs> that way you don't have to with a third. Okay. Um, so those are things so I hope that answers your question. So when you look at a book for kindergarten, and you guys are probably going to be reading to the younger ones, look for books that don't have a lot of sentences on the page. Three, three sentences, four sentences, one paragraph at the most. Yeah? Because it is really, really hard for them to sit still. It's hard for you guys to sit still when I'm reading a story to you. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, that's true. Yeah. This for you both. I can read a book upside down. I don't know if you guys can. I can actually take a book I don't know and I can read it upside down. But you may not be able to, so you may want to make sure you read the book first. So you're not like, oh, uh, oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Because you're going to lose the kid. Once you stop to look for your place, you almost, if they're kindergarten or first, they're like shot, okay? They're like shot, okay? Kindergarten is the first period, they're like shot. You lose them and they like, they go after you, they go into the kill, okay? So don't lose them if you can. Know your story, know the book. When you read it, just keep going, because otherwise, leave an opening and they're going to come in for the kill. So, and then, of course, there's going to be some kid in us. Yes? Um, my, you know, my mother, my mother said, um, um, you know, I, should, I shouldn't eat carrots in school. And you're like, okay, what does that have to do with the story? <laughs> okay. Yeah, right? They're going to do, oh, thank you very much, Tisha. We're going to go on with the story now. And then, you know. So you might want to have the kids know that you will stop at a certain point if they have questions. But you're going to read first, and then they can ask questions. Anything, anybody want to know anything else? Okay, this is what we're gonna do. I have books. You're going to read to somebody else. You're going to read to somebody else. Okay. So you're gonna to get to choose one book, and you're gonna to get to read to somebody else. Nobody gets to choose the fidget of feather because that's mine. Okay. So you're gonna to get to choose one book, and you read to the other person. Okay. And other person, please don't fall asleep on your partner. <laughs> you know, it's a little tough when you're falling asleep on somebody. Okay, so do you want me to pass out the book randomly or do you guys want to choose? Okay, you guys not going to all walk up here at one time and get the other. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 that's going to be there. I'm going to put it on the table. All right, oh. so you should just put it on the table.
Yeah, it was kind of funny. There was like a picture yeah. of them trying in the process, and they're like, of course, they get into it, and they're like, wait, they're like, kind of surprising. The funniest part in that book that I love is she tries on a glass slipper. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is a glass slipper. Okay, and because you shared, I'm going to give you this book where the glass slippers are. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Boys and girls, take chances. Be brave. Share. You never know. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoy um, reading some of these stories to each other. Um, I don't think they read. Did anybody have a hard time with the reading? No, you guys can read okay, right? <laughs> so I, I hope you both enjoyed it. Um, does anybody else want to share one more story? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so I read The Three Little Hobbitinas, and I really like this book because the sister was a smart one. Yeah. She built the house out of brick. Uh -huh. But it was like um, those mud bricks that they made in the desert. Yeah. And how the wolf tried to, tried to like squeeze through their steam pipe and ended up fall, falling in the pot because yeah. they, they lit it and he ran away. And at the end, they're just like, and if you ever hear a coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, well, you know what he's remembering. <laughs> you may have that. <laughs> All right. Um, can we show one more? One more. One more. Yes. Okay. So this is a stone book. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a version of some suit. And basically, this book um, is going to be popular in kind of Chinese culture. Um, it's three monks, and they come to this village that is not, it's kind of sketchy in, in some ways. And so basically, what these three monks do is that they make stone suits for the village, and it kind of brings, kind of reunites and brings the village together. And I think what I like about this book is that not only is it um, very enjoyable, I think it would be very enjoyable for little kids and also for adults as well. And I like the story behind it, but also like going through the book, um, they describe like the cool they put into the suits and the kids. A lot of the children's literature actually have very good morals in them, and they have really good um, values. And a lot of the books are actually written so it'll appeal to adults as well as as, as children. Um, I think I don't have more than one card, so I will let you choose. Woods. 
Duck and Gander watched him go. Duck sighed. Well, Gander, I guess you win the free trade contest. Maybe, said Gander, but you, Duck, are the one and only true and forever champion of champions. I am? Duck stared at Gander. Then she smiled and puffed out her feathers. Yes, I suppose I am. Gander peeked into the pot. Smells good. Shall we eat? And they ate the whole pot of Fox's delicious vegetable stew. Yeah. And um, Miss Evelyn here has a special announcement. And well, no, I'd like to thank all of you for participating today in our little short workshop. Uh, Miss Pat will be here. On a while, but on behalf of herself, Mrs. Waihe, who is our president of the Reefing Program, I'm all the way from Hilo, I'm Evelyn. Uh, today we have to share with all of you, including your advisors here, to take home a book to start with your club, a library for um, in books to the children that you go to read to. So everybody gets to take home one today. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, your attention and for being so nice to me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.